guitars. Uh, right away you think of um, Brian Setzer. Man, what a monster he is on the Gretsch guitars. Uh, I told you yesterday in part one about this guitar and how I got it. Uh, this duo jet reissue sat at uh, the local guitar center for a couple years. Retail price was like $22.95. It was on sale for $17 something. And one day I came into the uh, the store and they had this guitar in the rack with all the, the what do they call them, the cheaper Gretches, the Electromatic. And they had it listed for $700. So I didn't know whether it was a mistake or what, but for $700, I decided to, to buy it. Came with a nice case. Uh, it was a good deal. The guy from uh, Guitar Center told me that had I been there an hour earlier, I could have picked up a really nice Les Paul for $700. He says every once in a while, the, the main office in Columbus would fall up, call up and say, get this guitar, get that guitar, and basically blow them out the door. So I lucked into getting this one. Okay. So what do I like about Gretsch guitars? They look cool as get out. I mean, look at that. That is a beautiful guitar. So is, so is this one. They just look gorgeous, okay? They sound great. Nice and percussive. Both pickups sound good. sound good, they look good. Uh, it's an interesting sound. It's bright. Kind of reminds me of a Telecaster in a way. Takes on getting used to the shorter scale length, but uh, I like it. And of course, how can you beat a big speed vibrato? I mean, the big speed vibrato is great. So, that's what I love about these guitars. Um, some of the things I don't like, well, for one, there's this extra switch here that I, even on the old one or on the new one, I haven't figured out what it does. I guess it makes it a darker sound. Or maybe an out of phase sound or something. the other way. for those two sounds, so I probably really could live without that. Um, the bridge on, on this, this is a reissue, there's, there's no adjustment for um, intonation. This one with these wheels, you can adjust the spacing between the strings, but there's really no adjustment for intonation. Uh, same with, with that one. Now I notice on some of the newer Gretsch guitars, they've, they've changed this. Okay, and you can't adjust it. But you know what? Chet Atkins played this guitar with that bridge, and he never sounded out of tune to me. Uh, but uh, that could be an improvement. The other thing is this bridge actually is just resting on the body. It will move. If you bump it, it will wiggle out of place. Now, there's fixes for that. Um, like, right now, I have double-sided tape under there. You could probably just see it a little bit. Uh, and that, that holds it in place. Well, I've never had an issue, but you'd think, you know, on a guitar like this, you wouldn't need to do that. I think on the new ones, they're actually putting a little pin. It's a little pin that sticks out of the guitar, and there's holes in the bridge that go over it. But this will move, and if it moves, your intonation is totally gone. So that's probably what I don't like about, about them. On the older guitars, a lot of times the binding would, would be coming off. Um, it seems harder to find old Gretsch guitars in good shape, but the new ones, you know, they're very well built. It's very good looking. Uh, I like them. I like it a lot. I, I love that. Brown.
great percussive sound. You know, if you're playing rockabilly, Brian Seth. How can you go wrong? No. You got the sound, you got the you got the wiggle bar. Uh, it's great. So that's the other half of my uh, Gretsch guitar story. Um, that's it for today. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.